chapter 3 hardware. What are the learning objectives? By the end of this chapter, you should be able to show understanding of the need for input, output, primary memory, and secondary memory, including removable storage. There are the inputs are there, the processing will take place, and then the storage, and then the output. Storage is primary memory, that is RAM and ROM, and the secondary memory, hard disk, SSD, all the removable things, CD, disk, floppy disk, pen drives, all those things. So understanding of embedded systems, that is like phones, washing machines, many household items, which have microprocessors doing the processing and the program is embedded in it. Describe the principal operations of hardware devices. How the hardware devices operate. So understanding of the use of buffers. Buffer is a storage area, temporary storage area. Explain the differences between random access memory, RAM, and read-only memory, ROM. Explain the differences between static RAM and dynamic RAM. Difference between programmable ROM, that is PROM, erasable, programmable ROM, EP ROM, and electrically erasable programmable ROM, that means EE ROM. So the very first thing is overview of computer system hardware functionality. The system has to support the processing of data. Who does it? The CPU. Not a human, though I said who, but it is a CPU that does the processing and that will be done in chapter five. The storage of data. Where do you store the data? And the input and output of data. Input, very important, and the output is the useful uh, information. Thing is not covered in this chapter. One is the storage of data. Memory, we have the memory, which is primary memory, processor can access directly. There are two kinds of memory. That one is file, file store or secondary, which is for long term. They are not accessible by the processor directly. That's the difference. Memory, which is RAM and ROM, they can be accessed by the processor directly. So here is a chart. Trends in the factors affecting the choice of memory components. So the component here on this column, category, and the access time, capacity, size, cost, various uh, indicators here. So let's take the first one, register. What's the category? Processor component. Register is a very tiny, like one byte, two bytes, or two bytes, or four bytes, like that. Uh, very tiny register means area. In the CPU, in the processor, we have a small data area. They are called register. And that access time is like the fastest. Huh? The fastest or the highest speed or the shortest access time. Shortest access time is register. Then the cache and the capacity also highest. Capacity also very small here. Register is very small going up with these other items. Size also small, increasing this way. Size also small, only the cost is high. Only the cost is high, access time is low. Low, not slow, access time is low. So very short, quick access time. Capacity is also low. I told you very small, uh, tiny uh, areas. 
size is also very small, same thing. Then the cache memory and main memory. <coughs> cache memory and main memory, they are in the primary storage. Cache is also fast, it is also mm -hmm. fast, but not as fast as registers. <coughs> and they are in all these things more than uh, the register. Only the register, only the this one is lower. That means cache and memory is less costly than the register. Then comes the hard disk and the auxiliary storage. Hard disk, you know, auxiliary storage, the other, other things like pen drives and CDs, all those things, secondary. Their access time highest, that is slowest. Access time is more means the speed is very slow. Then the capacity, capacity very high. Hmm? Capacity is very high. Access time is uh, very big, very long. Size is also big. Size is very big. And the cost is less. And the cost is the other way around. Lowest priced one. Trends in the factors affecting the choice of memory components. Cache. What is cache? Cache is a bit in part of the CPU chip. It, it keeps some parts of uh, memory or what is being used frequently. Frequently used parts of programs and all that, they are stored here so that the program can work very fast. Then the media, storage media or devices, hard disk or solid state drive that is inaccessible to user. Hard disk is fixed inside, solid state drive is also in place of hard disk. The new, newer version is SSD, solid state drive. So they are fixed inside and the user cannot touch it or access it. Floppy disk, optical disk or magnetic tape carriage, cartridge. That is, those things are inserted into the into a drive for use. So that is different to hard disk and solid. Then also you get external hard drive, memory stick or a memory card, peripheral, which can be connected to the system. Peripherals. Then you get cloud storage. You have heard of cloud storage, we have done. Remote from the system, access via network. The Google, Google uh, worksheet that I have, Google Drive is there. So this kind of thing is for, um, uh, done in the cloud. The storage is there, we can access from anywhere. I don't have to carry my computer. Where do I go? Because those files, what I have stored in the cloud or Google Drive. There are many other uh, providers like that. I can go anywhere and access it if there's internet connection. From any device, I can access it. Then we come to data output. part data output we have the screen display yeah screen display you can see the output hard copy that is printed output printers do the hard copy output virtual headset display virtual headset display where it's it looks and sounds very real. Then the speaker, right into data storage devices. And this is also an output. See, all these are, we are talking about output, virtual headset display also. Output coming uh, for you to see. 
the speaker will give out the sound. Right, data storage devices. If you are saving a file onto a hard disk, what is processed and all that, all the data that is processed, put into a file and save on the hard disk, that is also output. Then the transmission on a network link. You are sending, you collect a lot of data and then send it to another location or another institute or a company or office or branch or something to send it. So that is transmission on a network link. That is also output because all these things going out from the CPU, if you get it, from the system, from the memory screen, also from the uh, going out, hard copy going out to a printer. Virtual headset display, the processor will give you the details on a headset. Speaker also, the sound will come out from the speaker on the computer. Right now, the storage devices, the hard disk. From the memory, the CPU will transfer that into the sending. Sending from the CPU to the CPU or the memory RAM to the secondary storage devices. So that is going out. That's why output. Transmission on a network link also output. Because we are sending, we are going from your computer to another place. Now, let's look at the data input. What are the devices? Keyboard or keyboard entry. Touch screen, game control, scanner, microphone, reading from storage device, transmission on a network link. See the, the last three items, microphone, hear the speak. Reading from storage device, right into data storage. Transmission on a network link, same thing. Huh? We are sending out. Here we are receiving in, input. <clears throat> Embedded systems, what are they? In a processor, like the computer having a processor, is embedded systems also processor, memory, and I.O. capability, that is input-output capability. If these are constructed on one chip, then it's called a microcontroller. The system can provide a full user interface. Example, in a mobile phone, See? mobile phone, full interface. That's also an embedded system. What are the things? Processor. Processor is there. Then the, the memory is there in the phone and I.O. capability, input and output. Possible, no? They are special purpose, possibly performing only a single function. Take, for example, a washing machine. You can't program it to do something else wash dishes or something. It's one program and it's embedded in it. Single function. So that's why it's called special purpose. General purpose is you can do anything. Any other any other programs also possible one. So earlier there's a disadvantage. Programming was difficult. What is the, the, the disadvantage? Programming was difficult by because the memory space available to store a program was limited. A chip is limited. Now let's look at the, the phone, the size of the phone and the size of your computer, which can hold more anything, memory or whatever, right? The computer can hold more. Phone is less. So the the programming also was difficult because the memory space was not enough. There was the disadvantage that it that if errors were found following installation, then new chips had to be manufactured and used to replace the faulty ones. You know that uh, if there was a fault, then you had to replace it. You had to manufacture a new one and send it to the user to replace. But nowadays, it's not there. Then new chips had to be used to replace the faulty one. In modern systems, less such problems. Those are not very common. Uh, but there are advantages of this new technology, IoT, what is that? Internet of Things. Everything connected to the internet. So installed with network connection, 
useful why right? providing information and updates to the owner is very easy not like those days sending a cd or something but here just connect it to the internet and the updates are available but then there's a new problem what is that security concern who is going to protect your devices from the internet uh, threats App memory components the key terms are ram and rom ram is volatile memory that can be read from or written to any number of times read only memory non volatile it means temporary only till the power is present the non volatile memory that cannot be written to you can't write anything into the rom but can read from you can read what is there instructions can be read from any number from any number of times can read from any number then the ram we take the ram separately and see can read from ram can write to ram yes volatile that means it's temporary when you switch off the computer everything is erased there are two types one is dram the other one is sram dram is dynamic huh? sram is static so constructed from capacitors dram is constructed from capacitor what are capacitors electronic components that leak electricity and therefore need regularly recharging every few millisecond so these capacitors if you know if you can learn a little bit of electronics find the properties of it you charge it and then it leaks it goes down after some time so because of that you need regular recharging so every few milliseconds you have to send a charge again send a charge again recharge every fresh cheaper to make it's cheaper to make and has a higher density for data storage now compare this to the hard disk which is cheap but higher price registers very expensive less capacity very tiny then we here when the the when it is cheap density for stor data storage high density so it has large high capacity but cheap used to make main memory so to make main memory you get this dram then is ram constructed from flip flops you will learn about flip flop these are circuits we we'll learn in chapter 19 circuits which can keep them you know the current circulating inside the circuit that continue to store data indefinitely while the computer system is switched on so that's a that's capable of keeping it so no need to refresh like this every few milliseconds you don't have to refresh because there is no leak it keeps it retains the power short access time short access time right it doesn't this one doesn't say the time about time so that means shorter means what shorter than dram you have to check this you know you have to detect these subtle things very tiny things that are there you must learn on your own also you can learn this means shorter than dram but it's not mentioned there on our own we learn then used to make cache memory so we learned about cache a little while ago that is made out of this is ram used to make ram in embedded system in embedded system phones washing machine microwave ovens many devices then the ram in that ram is embedded into a chip no? microprocessor and all these things so then for that you the you use is ram static ram chip the word volatile has several meanings right remember that volatile memory no longer stores data 
when the system is switched off. Then we come to ROM. We can only read from, we can only read from ROM. We can't write ROM. And non-volatile, which is permanent. Those are bootstrap program. But the bootstrap program, when you start the computer and uh, it is empty, and uh, the CPU is not capable of doing anything without instructions which are in the RAM. So in, when you switch on the computer, the RAM is empty and the CPU cannot do anything without any instructions in the RAM. So where do you, what are the instructions it needs initially? The operating system instructions, no? OS, any, before doing any other program, before example, loading a MS Word, Excel or anything, the OS should come to memory first. Without that, CPU is helpless. So how do you get it? If the CPU is helpless, how can you get that? Where is it now? It's on the hard disk. It's on the hard disk. It's stored. And where are the instructions to take it? It is in the ROM. This is what we call bootstrap program. Bootstrap program. That is in the ROM. It's non-volatile, so it won't get erased. You can't write into it. No one can change it. And the manufacturer has put this program to start the computer or boot the computer. Starting the computer and booting the computer are two different. When you switch on the computer, the power will come. But if the operating system is not loaded successfully and uh, you can't do any work, then it's not booted yet. It's just started. Booting means loading the operating system successfully. Then you are ready to do any work. The CPU is ready to do any work. You can do. So this ROM is used in many embedded systems. There are four different types of ROM. What are they? In the simplest type of ROM, the programs or data are installed as part of the manufacturing process. So If different, if different contents are needed, the chip must be replaced. So to need some change to the, the contents, then you have to remove the chip or the IC and replace it with a new one. That is one type. Then another one, programmable ROM, PROM. The manufacturer of the chip supplies chips to a system builder. System builder is the computer manufacturer and the ROM manufacturer is there. He gives the this system builder. The system builder installs the program or data into the chips. Into the chip, the program is embedded. This allows the system builder to test some samples of program chip before committing the whole batch to be programmed. So it's like, like a like proofreading when you give when you give an order to a printer, maybe some invitation or some notice. Before printing, he gives you a small sample to see. It's called proofreading. You check whether everything is okay. Similar thing happens here. When that is finalized, uh, then, the, then it can be manufactured, mass scale. As with the simple, simplest type of ROM, the program or data once installed cannot be changed. So that we already know that it's that it's uh, cannot be changed. It cannot be changed. Right? That's the second type. Now the third one is a more flexible type of ROM <clears throat> is erasable ROM or EPROM, EPROM. The installed data or program can be erased. How? Using ultraviolet light. And new data or a 
new program can be installed. However, this pro reprogramming usually requires the chip to be removed from circuit. You have to remove the chip or the IC from the uh, motherboard and then only you can uh, reprogram it, that is P-ROM, EP-ROM, erasable, programmable ROM. The fourth one is the most flexible type of ROM, which is electrically erasable ROM. Two is electrical, electrically erasable, P, that is programmable ROM. As the name suggests, this works in a similar way to EP-ROM, except an electrical signal can be used to remove existing data. So you don't have to remove the chip, unlike the earlier one. Electrical signal, while it is there on the board or the circuit, you can. This has a major advantage that the chip can remain in the circuit while the contents are changed. However, the chip is still used as read-only. So still, it will be used as read-only. Then we go into buffers. buffers. As I told you before, temporary storage area. Whenever data has to be transferred from one part of a computer system to another, there are many instances of transferring data from this place to that place, like that. A problem occurs if the data can be sent more quickly than it can be received. So you are sending it x, speed of x, then uh, receiving speed of y. If y is slower than um, x, then what happens? You are like forcing, forcing data which cannot be received by the other part. Then that is a problem. <clears throat> The solution to the problem is to use a buffer. Like a place, a temporary place. Without rushing it, everything to there, you just keep it here. Data enters uh, a buffer before being transmitted to its destination. So first, it goes into a buffer. Then only it will go into the destination. The buffer functions as a queue. So the data emerges in the order that it entered, that it has entered the buffer. Right? So you, you keep it in a place and then like you may have seen certain places when a lot of people are coming, you send only about five. When the corona started also, like supermarkets, they allowed only 20 inside the thing or whatever, depending on the size of the capacity. You just keep them. So typically the, buff uh, the buffer functions as a queue so the data emerges, emerges in the order that it has entered the buffer. So first come, first serve, the first one who came with the front of the queue and then likewise. Typically, the buffer is created in the computer memory. So it's kept in the computer memory, like a waiting room in the real world. The real world also, you get waiting rooms places. No? With the, uh, if you are not accepted, you are not ready, you have to wait. You have to wait until you, until the others go or something like that. That's a waiting room there, which is similar to the buffer in the computer memory. You have, what you have to remember is, it's a temporary storage area and it's in memory. RAM. Now we come to second primary one. So you have magnetic media, that is tape, hard disk, floppy disk, zip, and gas. Those are the things. And then you have <clears throat> DVD and Blu-ray, and the solid state media. So these are the three types. So first, let's 
and all these things, magnetic media and tape. That means magnetic tape, magnetic hard disk, magnetic flop disk, because all these are magnetic. Zip, yes, these are not popular. Popular. They were there only for a very short time. Zip disk and jazz disk. Uh, a schematic diagram of a hard disk is shown in figure 3.02. Points note about the physical construction are, see that this is the diagram. There is more than one platter. So that's, now this one hard disk, but there are three platters here, or three disks, three plates like this, three circles. <clears throat> there is more than one platter. The term is platter. This one. Each platter has a read-write head for each side. See? These are the read-write head. Read-write head. This is the actuator arm. This is the actuator. Read-write head. So this has on either side. This is the platter. This you can see this arrow is coming onto the top side, and there's one on the bottom underneath this also. Both working at the same time. So the platter spin in unison all together and at the same speed. So these all must spin at the same speed in unison, unison like one, in like so spin like one. Like if they are fixed together, how do they spin? The same speed. No? So like that, it should spin at the same side. Otherwise, what happens? The data will be, when you read again, if these speeds change, like playing a song in the wrong speed, you don't get the correct voice or the correct music. No? Then <laughs> the read, write, head, heads, are attached to actuator arms. So this is the actuator arms. Is like a robotic arm, which are controlled by the computer, which allow the heads to move over the surfaces of the platters. So this will move. <clears throat> How do these heads move? Well, this is yeah. It can turn only this way. <clears throat> so either say. This point, if this is the point which the head is there, this is like an arm here, another extension of this arm. But if the head is just here, just one point, you can read one track at a time, like this. These are the tracks. Here's the tracks. This is one track, the red one, another track, another one. Right. So the data is there. So this small point, if it is here, then it can move like this, either there. Yeah, or that's all, either there or back here. You can go to the edge of that. These are turning. These are turning. Now, this is at the in inside, the inner place, the head. If you want, if the data is somewhere here, then it has to move there and wait. Then, when it is turning, it will read. Or if it will go to the outer edge, then you go there, then come back. Maybe the file is in two different places or two files. First finish one there, then you take another one. Like that. The, the motion of each read-write head is synchronized with the motion of the other heads. So these heads all do like synchronize, same way. If this moves that way, all move that. If this moves to the middle, the center of this track, then these others also do the same thing. That is, the motion of each read right head is synchronized all together with the motion of the other heads. Then, cushion of air ensures that a head does not touch a platter surface. Now, this is airtight. This is sealed. All this is together, you may have seen our disk. Uh, you see, the, it's enclosed, it's sealed. You can't see the, these platters and read edits and all that unless you remove it, you open. 
So it's covered and sealed. It's airtight. This turns at about 7,000 revolutions per minute, RPM. So when that rotates so fast and with the air enclosed in a sealed container, this tends to go up a little. The, the head, the read right head, moves a little bit up above this. It's not touching the surface. Just tiny bit up. Where the air is traveling through this, it will lift like a plane. The plane goes fast uh, on the ground due to the air, the drag, the pressure of the air. Then it will take go up. Same way, this will also raise a little bit. So it's not touching. A cushion of air ensures that a head does not touch a platter surface. If it touches, what happens? By some error, maybe the power problem, power goes off without shutting down or something like that. <clears throat> and then what happens? This will, if this touches at that high speed and this metal, this is this metal, it will scrape. To scrape this and damage the data. If it damage, so you won't be able to use those places, the files that are stored, the damaged area. Supposing if it damages the area where the boot, we, we were talking about the boot program, can you remember? There's a thing called boot sector. These are sectors. Right? These sectors, you have a one particular thing called boot sector. From there only, the operating system is loaded. So if you can't, if this is affected, if the head falls onto this place and it affects the boot sector, then you have to throw this hard disk because you can't do anything. You want to correct it, to repair it or anything, you can't do anything because it, the computer doesn't start with that. So you have to throw away. Uh, that is why it doesn't touch. Make sure that it doesn't touch. A schematic drive diagram of the components of a hard disk drive with this. So let's go through the diagram again. Concentric tracks. Concentric tracks. That means these tracks all have one center. One center. And on, out of, outside, concentric. It's one center and then not a spiral. Not spiral also, separate tracks without touching each other. Each track consists of a sequence of bits. These are formatted into sectors where each sector contains a defined number of bytes. The sector becomes the smallest unit of storage. So this sector is the smallest unit of storage. The collection of tracks is referred to as a cylinder. So when you, <clears throat> when you take this And it's called a cylinder, see? Cylinder. Now, if you draw lines like this, not physical, there's nothing like that. But logically, if you draw lines like that, it will be a cylinder. Use the sectors, use of the sectors become fragmented. So these sectors where they are saved, the files can get fragmented, means one piece here, another piece there, another one there, one part of the file is there. So all defragmented and which means this read write head has to go the up and down, up and down, up and down. It becomes slow. So in order to make it fast, there is a program called defragment. Defragment. Like get all the fragments, the pieces and put together. Then again, just one revolution is enough to read that whole file. Then direct access, read, write, divide. So now it is there, the arm is there, the spindle. Spindle is this, like an axle around that only, this uh, revolves that uh, cylinder. Okay. So all power. block, block is like block of data, part of one section like this. In concentric track, uh, we have read that. Then uh, optical media. Optical media is CD, DVD, Blu-ray. That is because we are using a laser beam 
to burn and read. So optical laser is light. Laser is also light. Optical is connected to light. Developed from existing technology, not associated with computing system. So the CDs didn't come for computers. Earlier they were being used. That was adopted to computers later on. CDRW, that is read and write. Uh, replacement for floppy disk. So floppy disks were replaced when this came, CDRW came. Till then, the floppy disks were also there. Earlier CDR, that is read only. Then what happened? CD gave into DVD and now Blu-ray. Highest capacity now. <clears throat> Here is a diagram, a schematic drawing of an optical disk drive. Optical disk drive is technical details there. You don't have to worry if you can't remember these things. Just if you just read it and then. No, there's a tracking system, then the mirrors are there like that. If you have a rough idea, that will be enough. <clears throat> the optical disc has one spiral track running from the inner extreme of the surface to the outer edge. So there is a difference from what we saw. This is the concentric one center, and but the CDs and DVDs, you have the spiral. operation the disc spins all right that we know simultaneously the laser moves across ensuring that it is continuously focused on the spiral track so in the hard disk the read right head moves same way here the laser moves across ensuring that it is continuously focused on the spiral track the track on the surface of the disc has what are referred to as pits and land pits and land so here also a binary thing too two uh, marks. If pitch is one, then lands is zero. So computer needs only zero, zero and one. If that can be provided, okay, fine. The laser beam is reflected from the surface of the disk. So the laser beam is uh, reflected. The difference between the reflection from a pit Compared to that from a land can be detected. That is how, whether it's zero or one, it's detected after the reflection. This difference in the intensity of the light that it, the detector receives can be, can be interpreted as either a one or a zero to allow a binary code to be read from the disk. So if you when you burn, called burning a CD, the the laser will make pits like holes and some places won't make it. It will just remain. So that will be a zero or the other one is one or this one is one or whatever. Anyway, the two different things are one is a zero, the other one is a one. So the when the reflection comes, there is a difference in the light. So that is detected and identified as either 0 or 1. Then comes solid state media. Pen drives, SD cards, USB flash drives, no moving parts. The basis for this is flash memory. The solid state media, uh, flash technology, flash memory, which is a semiconductor technology with no moving parts. Big difference from the magnetic and uh, laser or optical, no moving parts here. The other two have moving parts. The circuits consist of 
arrays of transistors acting as memory cells. The most frequently used technology is called NAND. In the, in the logic gates, you do NAND gates, AND gates, NOR gates, circuits, logic circuit gates. Because the basic circuitry resembles that of a NAND logic gate, see chapter 4 for details. So the next chapter will be doing logic gates with the memory cells connected in series. Then blocks of memory cells can have their contents erased all at once in a flash. So that's another reason why these call flash memory. Furthermore, before data can be written to a block of cells in the memory, the data in the block first has to be erased. So writing, you have to erase it. A block consists of several pages of memory. Pages of memory. And memory is separate, uh, broken down into sections and they are called pages. Pages of memory. A block consists of several pages of memory. When data is read, Single page of data can be read in one operation. That's a rate. In one operation, um, one page can be taken out. So, rate. And the input and output of data. We have done. We have done the storage, and now we are just coming into the output devices provided for. Another section, which we will see in the next video. So for today, that's it. I hope you will learn something from this and do the assignments. Good luck. Bye.